what does make Tanner Mordecai such a, a talented quarterback that's been able to have such success through the first part of the season? Oh, uh, well, I think he does a lot of things really well. I think he's, um, he runs the offense uh, with, a, with a comfortability that, um, that you need in that kind of a system. Uh, he knows where the ball needs to go. He's good at reading coverages. Uh, he's got a lot of good players to distribute the ball to. Uh, he can make all the throws that he needs to make. Um, he gets the ball out quick. I don't think they've given up a sack uh, all year. Um, and then when the protection does break down or, or receiver's not open, he has the ability uh, to scramble and, and make plays with his feet. He's a, a, a capable runner. I'm not – that's not, I don't think, what he prefers to do, really, or what the coaches prefer him to do, but he has the ability to do that. Uh, he also has a, uh, uh, a really nice ability to find receivers downfield once he starts to move out of the pocket. Uh, the, the plays, he keeps plays alive, uh, makes plays on third down. Similar to the guy they had last year, I thought was really good at that. Um, just, just a good football player. What is the biggest challenge when you have – to face a team that you know is going to probably want to throw it 50 times. Well, they, they do throw it well, but they're really balanced. Look at their stats. I mean, they're, they're rushing for, you know, over 200 yards a game. Um, and so they're, they're probably the most balanced team that we've seen coming in as far as just their ability to do both really, really well. Um, and so they've got they got a stable of running backs that are really good players. And then you look at all their skill players along with their tight end. I mean, they uh, just too many to name. Um, so they really balance. They uh, they take what you give them. A lot of RPO. Uh, if they feel like they've got numbers on the perimeter, they're really good at getting the ball out there to their skill players on kind of quick hitting screens. Uh, if they feel like you're overloading the box, and if you, you don't have numbers in the box, and they'll hand it off to one of those running backs, and they're they're big and physical up front. Um, they're just they're really good on offense. So, Thanks, coach. Uh, let's go to Bill Wagner, Annapolis Capital. Hey, Coach Newberry, good to see you. Bill Wagner, Baltimore Sun Media Group and Capital Gazette. I guess why don't you just tell us your general assessment of the team's defensive performance against Central Florida? Well, I was ecstatic after the game uh, that we got a win. Uh, players have been working their tails off. Um, we had a resilient group, so I was, I was ecstatic about that. Um, after coming in early Sunday and reviewing the game film, I wasn't quite as ecstatic. Uh, felt like we could have played a lot better. Um, and, you know, we've got a lot of guys out there playing that uh, I think played five sophomores and a freshman uh, on Saturday. And so um, there's a the good thing is we won a game uh, against a, a really good opponent. Uh, but we've got so much room uh, for improvement. Um, so that's that's good to come in after a win and, and still be a, a little bit upset about the way you play, knowing that you can play a lot better, not just um, from a – a technique standpoint, execution standpoint, but um, from a tackling standpoint, from a leverage standpoint, there's a lot of things. Uh, had, had a bunch of eye violations, a lot of things that we can clean up, and a lot of things uh, there are mistakes that young players tend to make or, or guys that have played a lot of snaps tend to make. And so, um, you know, I, I, winning that game um, and then a game like that against a really good offense and, un, and knowing – and seeing that you can be a lot better is, is encouraging and it's exciting. So looking forward to getting out there today, um, tough Tuesday. And, and uh, But we got to get a lot better uh, to have a chance to beat this SMU team. We're going to play much better on defense. But encouraged, you know, we gave up one play over 25 yards against UCF, who's a really explosive team. That was our goal going in. And uh, and so it was really encouraged, especially about the way we played in, in the second half, particularly. Uh, we haven't been a very good second half football team all year. Thought we finished the game and uh, didn't get many points in the fourth quarter. Um, and it's good to get a win when you're on the field last uh, on defense, too. So excited about the way you finished. So back to SMU, I mean, I think we were talking to Coach Nehemiah yesterday, and he kind of described, described mm -hmm. the spread that Tony runs as being more like the air raid. I think he's a disciple of uh, Leach. Um, what what would you say? Because it is the game rushing. That's pretty darn good. Um, I don't know if the pass sets that up or what, but kind of what, what's your thought it on does. this? I think it's smart the way they can do it. They, they take what you give them. 
if you don't, if you let them run the ball 50 times in the game and you give them the numbers that they want, then they'll, they'll do that. And uh, so I think the um, Riley does an awesome job with the offense. I think you see a lot of, of things that you see from, from Oklahoma a little bit in that regard. Um, you know, if you're going to load the box up, then they're, they're going to throw it maybe 40, 50 times and, and eat you alive that way. And so they're just they're really, really balanced. Um, so you, you got to do a great job um, defending both. And that's that's always problematic because you're conflicted in a lot of different ways. Uh, but they just they do a really, really nice job with the scheme. They're very well coached and they have very talented players. And uh, this might be the uh, maybe the best offense I've seen uh, in a couple of years. We've had to go so Ben, the running back's pretty good, but he didn't play mm-hmm. against USF. You got to figure he's going to go. I don't know. Uh, he he's outstanding. He, he's he may be one of the best I've seen on film. Um, really, really good player. Um, I, I understand he's got a foot ankle injury. I don't know how serious it is. I see he didn't play last week, so uh, I'm assuming that he'll play against us. Uh, and we, we won't prepare any differently. So obviously you went with that three safety, uh, three deep safety alignment again. Um, you got to figure that, you know, Sonny's now seen you do that two games in a row. He's going to, he and his offensive staff are going to scheme up against it. Do you feel like you got to be prepared for adjustments that teams might make if you go with that scheme? Sure. You know, we'll, we'll do, uh, and we're, we're progressing and, and uh, evolving as well on our side of the ball, figuring okay. out what we can do um, out of that three high stuff and trying to be a little more creative. And, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll change it a little bit week to week as well. Um, we can also get into our, our base uh, defense uh, really, really quickly. So uh, we have the ability to do both. Um, but, yeah, we, we've we gotten accomplished kind of what we wanted to get accomplished the last two weeks using that. Uh, the three high stuff. And, and so that's going to continue to be a, a staple for us. And, and uh, but we'll continue to change and evolve as, as, as we go. So um, I guess Gibbons was not available. He was not. Uh, he's back this week and uh, good to go. So how did you feel the young kid, uh, Morris, I believe Marcus, uh, 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 Coach Niamat had a nickname for him. I didn't quite pick mm-hmm. up on what he said, but How'd you feel that kid played being he's on the scout team a few weeks? Uh, Marcus Moore goes by by T here. Uh, Coach Yamad had a nickname for uh, Marcus scout Moore. Team. You know what? I, I thought, all things considered, I thought he did a nice job. For him, um, I didn't quite pick you know, up on there's, what he said. There's a lot of things that need to get corrected. Uh, but it's hard to get a guy ready in a week, and that's a that's a tough position to play. But I thought he handled it really, really well. Uh, I thought he had a really good week of practice and went into some, some you know, really played, good things yeah, for us scout team weeks. on Saturday. And last for me, before I hand it off, um, why did you go with Fletcher at striker? Uh, I thought Xavier McDonald played all right against Houston. Uh, I don't know if Xavier was available or not, but why did you decide to go with Fletcher and how did you think he played? He, he made a lot of tackles. He did. Well, Xavier was played, available. You know, he had, he had a little tackles. bit of an ankle deal uh, early in the week. And uh, but it was more about what, what Fletcher did than than it was about what, what Xavier hasn't done. And um, Fletcher's a big, talented dude. He's going to be a really really good player. He's one of those guys, like I mentioned earlier, you know, that, that has has a lot of room for improvement. And I think you're going to see uh, his improvement uh, increase exponentially through the course of the year. Um, the more snaps he takes, the better. That he's going to get, and uh, he's a guy that comes to practice and works every day. It's really important to him. He's a smart player, but body type wise, you look out there. He's, you know, he's six two, two hundred fifteen pounds. He's he's physical. He can run around, and so gives us a little different body type out there at Jack to play with. But thought he did a really good job, and again, he's his future here is is really really bright, and I think you'll continue to see him get better every week. I uh, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the defensive line. I noticed that uh, on third downs, you tend to drop eight and really just rush three. But even though you only rushed three, um, especially in the second half, they didn't get to the quarterback, but they never let him feel comfortable either. You know, they actually forced him to move around and let him know that the clock was ticking. Just wonder how uh, crucial was that to uh, to your, your effort in the second half? You know, anytime you, you drop eight in the coverage, you, you got to even have point the coverage because you know you're not you're not going to get much pressure on the quarterback. But if you can just get that guy moved a little bit, uh, not allow him to step up into big open windows, it's always kind of the goal on three down. Any, any kind of pressure you can get there is really 
uh, kind of a bonus. Um, but yeah, they, I thought they, those guys did a nice job. And, and there's times where you know, we tried to help them out with a, with a fourth rusher, and we did bring some pressure uh, on some certain scenarios there. And, and the, but we got to do a good job of mixing up. Um, we do that. I think Morris had a pretty good game, I thought. Um, and the, he made a couple plays in the second half where you you, you blitzed them. Um, one where you you forced a, a jet sweep to kind of bounce outside and kind of strung the play out. And then there's the play where he yeah. batted it down. Um, it's not unusual for, for you to, to send a quarterback blitz, but when you do run that, that, you know, three safety look, does that make you feel a little more comfortable knowing the, the, to being able to, to send McMorris in around the line of scrimmage like that easily been intercepted? I mean, the, the player was right yeah. there. And it's funny how that works sometimes. Yeah, it's still, you know, we've got a few different ways we can bring the corner from the boundary uh, and what we do. And, and the, that particular play you're talking about, he was just the fourth rusher. And so uh, that's what we call one of those perceived pressures where it feels like a blitz and really you're only rushing four. And so you can do some things in the back end where you're still playing safe coverage. Uh, so yeah, you don't mind. Uh, it's, it's not as risky as some of the other corner fires where you're leaving the safety out there in man coverage by himself. Thanks. Yes, sir. Uh, let's go to uh, Pete Medhurst. Pete, you there? Sorry, I'm trying to unmute myself I'm on my phone. Um, Brian, how do you equate what Taylor, Marcus, uh, and Fletcher did? Because, you know, those plays are made because guys are being aggressive. They're not playing tentative. Uh, as young players sometimes or new players can sometimes play, how do you equate the fact that they were able to have that kind of success as, as young players and, and very new at what you're asking them to do? Yeah. Well, I think all, all three of those guys really prepared well during the week. I think they, they knew what they were supposed to do for the most part. And when you, when you know what you're supposed to do, you can go and play fast and, and you're not tentative. And I think the other thing that we try to do is, is speed those guys up at times and so they're not always reacting to something instead they're they're going and doing instead of having to react to a certain scenario and so uh, but again real real pleased with with those three guys and what we asked them to do and and um, as young players haven't played any snaps or not hadn't played a lot of snaps for us which were Tiki's first snaps and Fletcher's first start and you know Taylor's um, third game in there as a starter but uh, we've got to make sure that uh, we're, we're coached really well and, uh, and that they're doing things in practice uh, that they're going to be doing in, in the game. You all as coaches preach details. Uh, the fact that Busick rides his man upfield and is able to disrupt the jet sweep there on that final uh, possession. You preach pursuit to the ball. And uh, after a tough first half, Diego makes a great play pursuing to the ball to have those plays made and have those on tape, how much does that help reinforce that message for you uh, when you have prime examples uh, of those things being yeah, successful? Yeah, great. And I think when, you know, something that, that we drill and we talk about all the time, they, you know, we always talk about playing the next play and, and, uh, and that pursuit kind of covers up, can't cover up mistakes. And I think that's what you're seeing with Diego. I think he's, he's playing at a different level right now. And, and a lot of plays that he made on Saturday, uh, Probably shouldn't have got to him, but we made a mistake or didn't fit something right at, at somewhere else. Uh, he covered it up because uh, he's playing at such a high level and with such great effort. Um, and, you know, they complete a pass that would have been a converted third down. He turns and chases and, and does a drill. We we'll work the same drill today in practice uh, that, that he's done probably 100 times. He did it to perfection. And so it's, just, it's awesome as a coach to see it happen. But yeah, it certainly can, confirms and reinforces what you're preaching as a coach uh, to the guys when they see it happen during a game. And so it's always now in, in, in everybody in the back of everybody else's mind uh, when they're chasing the ball down the field. I want to pass this completed plays not over. And so that was an exceptional effort play. And so uh, that's what we're all about. And uh, to, to for your captain linebacker to do that and get that on film is awesome. And then play that Busick made. And I think it's great for his confidence, but just showed his athleticism there. Uh, and how hard he plays as well, and uh, yeah, so that's that's a good question, Pete. But those are those are, are two great examples, especially the one with Diego chasing and punching the ball out. Thank you, sir. I'll make another trip around. Scott Wyckoff, you good? 
I'm good. Uh, Wags. Coach, with regard to Diego, I mean, he plays so hard and he gives you everything he's got, but you can't have offsides penalty on third down, gives him a first down and a late hit, which was blatant. Yeah. I mean, that was way late. It was. Um, how do you handle that? I mean, the guy's a senior captain and he's a, and he, he gives you his heart and soul, but I mean, sure. And, and he is. And, uh, you know, with a guy like, like Diego, you, you really don't have to say much, uh, truthfully. Some, he's got to um, be held accountable he's, too, he's right? He's hard on himself as, as any of us could be. And so you just, you, know, you got to do better and you move on. And the thing that Diego has done this year that he may not have done in the past is uh, he, he doesn't let that affect the next play. You know, he made a mistake, he knew it. And, uh, but he made up for it as the game went on and, and uh, tell our kids all the time, play the next snap, play the next snap. And so when you make a mistake, you got to play the next snap. When you make a great play, you, you got to play the next play. And so he was able to do that, put it behind him, but he, he knew how costly those penalties were and uh, was upset with himself. And, and he knows better, you know, he's, he's, he's an extremely smart player. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you play with that kind of emotion uh, and you play that hard, uh, sometimes those things happen. And uh, just so, so happened that they were at really bad times. And uh, so, but, but he knows better. And, um, and we, we talked about it. And uh, I doubt if you see that those things happen again. Some again folks year. who watched the game on television and saw replays said that Jarius Warren was not responsible for that face mask. Is that true? Yeah, I, I certainly couldn't see it uh, on the, uh, didn't see it during the game. And you watch our film, certainly couldn't see it on our film either. So it was a, uh, that was a disheartening call, but you know, there's there's always you know one or two of those in the game that calls it that are called on you or calls it you don't get that you maybe should, and that's just just part of football. It goes both ways, but yeah, it's disappointing because that's a it's a huge 15 yard penalty that kind of propels that that drive there. Uh, I believe it's right at the end of the, the first half, correct? Yes. Yeah. So we had that penalty, uh, and then we had the other one on third down where he hit the, hit the quarterback out of bounds, and so. And we can't do things like that uh, for sure. But some of those calls you get like that, there's nothing you can do about it. What does it mean to you and your teammates to have the honor this week of having the, the top defensive player in the conference? Uh, you know, it was definitely an honor being recognized. But, you know, overall, the defense did great. You know, flew around. Coaches made a great game plan. And, um What was your – in practice, when you were on the scout team and trying to earn a spot, what did you try to do each day in practice to catch the coach's eyes so when you got the opportunity like you did this week that you could get into the lineup and they could trust you? Uh, well, last year on scout team, you know, uh, you just tried to do what the coaches tell you to do and, you know, give 100% effort at all time, try to give a good look and uh, prepare the guys. What was it uh, playing at Christian Brothers College? How did that prepare you? A, a powerhouse in Missouri, back-to-back -back state titles. How did that prepare you to, to play football at this level at Navy? You know, the, the coaches back in high school at CBC were definitely the number one contributor to preparing me to come here. Um, just fantastic coaches and big-time football, too. Um, got some big-time players and all my buddies are at Division One schools, and you know that really helped prepare for this level of competition. Thank you, Bill Wagner. Well, Taylor, talk a little bit about the big plays you made on Saturday: the fumble recovery and the interception. Well, you know, I was just. Uh, well, fortunate enough to be in the right position, doing my job on the play, and was able to make a play. Um, you know, like I said earlier, defense flew around, and without that and without, you know, the calls from Coach Newberry, you know, we wouldn't be able to make plays. So this is so much like last year's situation when um, Mitch West had to 
take over for Evan Falkman, and now you're taking over for Mitch West. Can you talk about the next man up mentality and the fact that, you know, last year Mitch West stepped in and, uh, you know, toward the end of the season, he's playing really high level football. And then of course, earlier this year, he's playing high level football. And now you're stepping in for Mitch and, and making contributions. Can you kind of talk about how you all have been able to maintain a high level of safety play despite these injuries? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. And I, I think it starts in practice, you know, coach Newberry talks to us all the time and, Tells us to prepare like we're the starter. Maintain so, a high level safety despite these injuries. No matter if you're on scout team or if you're starting, I mean, you always need to prepare and be ready. And I think that mindset has helped us a lot. And I'm thankful for guys like Mitch, guys like Evan Falkman, who like were always willing to help teach me and teach the young guys. And I think that's what really separates us. How much is Mitch? been able to help you i don't know if he's been able to get out to practice but i don't know where he's you know in, in terms of his surgery and whatnot but has he been able to give you some pointers yeah mitch has definitely been out a lot and you know after some plays like we'll just talk to the side and kind of talk through what i saw and he's just there for support and it's it's really awesome i'm, I'm glad that he's on our sideline with us and can you talk about the young kid, Marcus Moore, who had to step in this week or this past Saturday and play and contributed seven tackles? How did you feel he, uh, he, he uh, you know, acquitted himself? Yeah, I, I thought Marcus did pretty well for his first time being out there. And he's been one of those guys who's been working his butt off since the summer. And, you know, even at the beginning of this year, he's just been like head down in the playbook, taking notes and, he was able to get the call, and I think he did his job. Definitely some things to work on for all of us, but, you know, I think we were really, really proud of how Marcus played. Thanks, Taylor. Uh, let's go back. Wyckoff, you good, or do you need anything? Uh, just one more. Taylor, um, tell me about Weldon Spring. Is, is, a, a, is it a suburb of St. Louis? Is a town to itself? Uh, yeah, it's a town to itself. It's in uh, San Charles, so it's a um, little area. Um, yeah, that's about it. What was it like growing up there? Because it, it looks like a, a small town. Did you like growing up in a small town? Uh, well, we moved around a little bit, but I mean, it was definitely a lot of fun. It's a, a good place to be and a good place to live. I enjoyed it. Did the high school draw students and players like you from all over the St. Louis area? Uh, definitely all over the St. Louis area. I mean, our high school is very diverse when it came to where people are from, and it was awesome. I think that's what makes CBC really strong. And I guess you find that, too, with the Naval Academy. On your team, you've got players from all over the country. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's really no, I don't think there's anyone on the team from Missouri, which is kind of crazy, but uh, it's really cool to be able to meet people from all over the country. Well, I was curious, uh, who recruited you? I'm not sure I know who recruits Missouri for Navy. Yeah, so there were a couple coaches who recruited me, um, and they're, they're all gone now, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly who it was. I can't remember the name off the top of my head right now, but they're, they're no longer here. <laughs>